Okay, let's continue on. Um, this is chapter chapter two, notes number one, uh, continuation, and they're starting to starting to talk about some two two important formulas. But I say the slope intercept is probably the most important one, and hopefully the the one that you're most comfortable with. And it describes uh, the behavior of lines. And of course, m, we know, is our slope. That's how steep it is, either positive or negative. And b, we call that the y-intercept point. And that just describes, along this y-axis, where our line crosses. And by the way, every line has to have a y-intercept. And of course, they have slopes as well. Uh, we talked about that in the previous video. Okay, and then the standard form, it's just a way to uh, rewrite an equation of a line. But a, b, and c must be integers, whole numbers, no decimals, no fractions. And also, the only one that must be positive is a. So we'll look at a couple of examples of this. So they want us to, in this example, they want us to graph the lines using the slope-intercept method. So let's identify what points we have. We have a slope of negative 1 half. So that means we're going to go down a quantity of 1. And we're going to move to the right a quantity of positive 2. <coughs> and our intercept is at 2. So what does that tell us? That tells us that its coordinates are 0, comma, and 2. And one way that you might remember this is that where do you begin when you graph? You begin with the B. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go up 2, and we're going to place our first uh, coordinate point. Then we're just going to follow our rules for the slope. So if we start off at this point, we go down 1 and over 2. We'll put our first point. And if you want to do a couple more, that's fine. And it's also possible to go back in the left direction. So if we go up 1, we have to go over 2 to the left. So that sometimes tricks students up a little bit. <coughs> because what did we just do? We just went up 1. But we move to the left 2. And of course, the left indicates a negative. And if you have 1 negative divided by 1 positive, it's still a negative, isn't it? So we haven't violated our slope rule in this problem. So just um, do your best to connect those dots. And that is your graph. All right. Um, on problem number 8, um, looks like looks like I can't move this machine very well. So um, I'm just going to use this graph that we have right here, and we're going to take this 4x minus oh, excuse me 4y 4y minus 3x equals 24. And we're going to try to graph that using the slope-intercept formula. So in order to do that, I have to solve for the letter y. So we're just going to move this minus 3x quantity over by adding 3x. Can't add those two together, so we just have 3x and a positive 24. And now we can divide it by 4, everything by 4. So when we do, we get y is equal to 3 fourths x plus 6. Now, don't be tempted to put this into decimal form, because in decimal form, it doesn't really help us graph, because we don't really know how to go up and down a decimal quantity. So let's just leave it in fraction form. So where do we begin? We begin by identifying our slope is equal to 3 fourths. And our y-intercept is at 6. So that tells me that I have a point 0, 0, 6. 
and this is where I'm going to begin. So I'm going to go up to this graph 6, put my first coordinate point, 0, 6, and my slope is 3 fourths. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And since we ran out of graph, let's go ahead and go to the left. So we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's negative, and then we're going to move over to the left 4. And so we made a negative move, but we also went down, which is negative. So a negative divided by negative is going to give me a positive. So my slope is still the same. And let's just draw a line connecting those blue dots. And I didn't do a very good job there. Let's try that again. There we go. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, let's see. The next problem that they ask us to do is to graph it using the intercept method. So let's let's come up with a, a step or a couple of steps that we can use to solve using the intercept method. So we already know that that we have a y-intercept, and recall that's identified easily if you use the slope-intercept form. But that nowhere in this equation does it identify what the x-interception point is. So let's talk about how we can solve that. Well, what did, do you remember what we just said about uh, the y-intercept? The y-intercept has some number for y, but x is always 0, right? So in order for me to find the y-intercept, I can just plug in x equals 0 in my equation, and that'll give me the y-intercept. So we can use the same technique to find the x-intercept, because the x-intercept is going to be along this x-axis, but not up and down off of the x-axis. So that means that our y-coordinate is always going to be 0, always. So if we plug in that, it's going to give us a numerical answer for our x-intercept. So let's try that. Uh, if we're going to do our x-intercept, we simply plug in 5 times 0, because that was y, and set that equal to 15. Of course, anything times 0 is 0, so you just have 3x equals 15. So my x-intercept, if I divide both sides by 3, and divide by 3, I get that my x-intercept is 5, so you just go over to positive 5 and indicate it with the coordinate point. So the y-intercept will do the same thing, but this time, every time we have x, we're going to plug in 0. So of course, that goes to 0, so you have 5y is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 5, and we get our y-intercept equal to 3. So now that you have two points on the graph, and they're both easy to identify, well, we can just graph those two up. Okay. And I think that pretty much does it for section one. So I'll try to make one for two, and hopefully this will help.